So the reading is taken from Matthew, and it's entitled, The Visit of the Magi. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied. For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Thanks be to God. Carol, thank you. Morning, Jeanette. Good to see you all. Do you know, when, early this morning, uh, when Finn and I woke up, we were thinking, we have no idea how many people are going to be in church today. Because it's, it's just one of those Sundays after Christmas where, uh, you know, people couldn't be anywhere. So isn't it lovely that we're gathered together? And it's great, too, that we're, we're crossing a number of congregations today as well. So, and welcome to a few visitors we have with us as well who are, um, who've got a break from their own churches as well. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that your spirit knows best what we need most. And so, Lord, I pray that as we come before your word, it would be your spirit that speaks to us, that comforts us, that encourages us, that envisions us on the cusp of this new year. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I wonder what some of your favorite Christmas songs are outside of the carols. Does anyone want to shout out what some of your favorite Christmas songs are? How about some of the young people? Any favorite Christmas songs that you feel you can mention in a church? Anything that just kind of, or, sorry, Sam, were you saying something? No. (laughs) Don't want to put you on the spot. Okay, anyone else? Any? Oh, Little Town of Bethlehem. That is great. Other songs that just kind of, Last Christmas, Jingle Bells, Mary's Boy Child. Rocking around the Christmas tree, we like that. Yeah, Calypso Carol. There's loads, aren't there? One, one of the Christmas songs I love, um, and I promise I won't sing it to you now, and it, it, Driving Home for Christmas. Oh, yeah. Now, that's classic, isn't it? 
That is classic. I think it's fantastic. For me, it's, it's really evocative. And it, it's something, of, it, it speaks so much about people seeking to come home at Christmas. And, and actually, I, I saw on YouTube a, um, a little comment below one of the versions of it saying that this person's father had been a truck driver all his life. And, and he drove right across America and Canada. But he would always do his best to drive home for Christmas. And his father had just died this last year. And he says listening to that song really speaks to him. Well, we're thinking this morning, just very briefly, just to reassure you, uh, just very briefly, about journeys. Uh, because as we look at the, the heart of the Christmas story, there are masses of journeys that, that are occurring. And I want us to think about those journeys, and particularly the journey of the wise men, and think about how it speaks to us as we reach the end of 2023 and as we prepare to travel into 2024. So we know Mary and Joseph had an arduous journey, a journey that was driven by legal obligation. And that would have been a journey that would have been really uncomfortable for someone at that stage of pregnancy. I say that as someone who hasn't been pregnant, but I've accompanied someone who has been pregnant three times. And, um, but it, it seems to me, if that's acceptable to say, that it would be a really uncomfortable journey to take. Then there's the shepherds. They had a different sort of journey. They were probably tending sheep that would have been used in the temple in Jerusalem for sacrifice. And their journey to Bethlehem wouldn't have been as long as Mary and Joseph's, but it was an unexpected journey. They hadn't anticipated that journey until the shepherds arrived, until the angels arrived, sorry. And then the angels, what about their journey? You can imagine them as they were making their way from the glory of heaven. And as they were kind of saying to one another, you know, guys, we've got to get this message right. This is quite important. You know, how, have we really got the message clear in our heads? But you, we, we can imagine their journey. And then there's the journey of these three wise men, these three magi. And, um, of course, we're very aware what would have happened if there had been three wise women, not three wise men. We know that they would have asked for directions. We know they would have arrived on time. We know that they would have scrubbed the sheep shelter clean. We know they would have prepared a festive casserole. And we know there would be peace on earth, without a doubt. But... <laughs> But these three, the journey of the Magi, these wise men, I think has a number of things to say to us. And I want to think very briefly about four things, about how they journeyed. So first of all, they journeyed in wonder. They journeyed in wonder. It was wonder that, you know, triggered their journey. They'd been gazing at the stars. They were those who sought to understand the stars and understand how the stars spoke about life and to try and make sense. And they saw this star in the east and they believed it had special significance. Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born to be the king of the Jews? And it was wonder, it was amazement that, in a sense, fueled their journey. And I wonder, sorry, I wonder, I do. I wonder, have you or I lost a sense of wonder? A sense of amazement at the gift of life and that God should send Jesus to us. When one of our grandchildren um, arrived at our house, um, 
one evening just before Christmas, our Christmas tree lights were on, and um, the Christmas tree is in the conservatory, and the lights are all reflected around the glass. And when Johnny went into the conservatory and saw the Christmas tree and the lights reflect, he just went, wow. And I think we need that sense of, wow. God, you would do this for us. Rabbi Abraham Herschel said this, our goal should be to live life in amazement. And I think as we journey towards 2024, we can pray, Lord, would you graciously restore that childish sense of wonder in us? That sense like Johnny, wow. And wow, Lord, you invite me, you invite us to be part of your ongoing work of redemption in the world. Wow. To journey in wonder. And a second reflection is that these wise travelers journeyed with intent. They were purposeful. We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. We don't know what sort of distractions might have come across their, their path en route. They could have been diverted in all sorts of different ways. But actually, they remained focused on the star. They kind of said, we've got to follow the star because this star is pointing towards one who it was prophesied would come. And so there was a kind of single-minded determination about them. I was reading the other day about one of the um, Arctic voyages that English sailors undertook in the 19th century. And on, one, on this one occasion, 138 English sailors decided to chart the Northwest Passage around the Canadian Arctic in the Pacific. And it proved to be a turning point in Arctic exploration. The voyage was projected to take two to three years, yet they only carried 12 days of fuel and no suitable clothing at all. However, what they lacked in purposeful planning, they made up for in entertainment. They had a 2,400 volume library, musical instruments, cut glass, china, and silverware for everyone on board. And strangely, they were much better equipped for afternoon tea than they were for Arctic exploration. It has been said that some recent generations have been generations that have everything to live with, but nothing to live for. And they journeyed with intent. They journeyed with purpose. And for you and I to journey with purpose in our walk with the Lord, we need to make sure that we are focused, that we're purposeful, that we get rid of unnecessary distractions. Jesus told his disciples to kick the dust off their feet when he'd been through a town that hadn't welcomed them. And if you've been at SML for some time, you'll know that at the end of the year, as we step into a new year, we actually do that. We kind of fit, symbolically kick the dust off our feet. And I'd love us to do that now. So if you're able to, would you, would you please stand? You might feel a little bit, little bit self-conscious, but... Do you know what? Over 2023, all of us will have accumulated some mud on our shoes. Some of us will have had words spoken to us that have really bruised us. Some of us would have encountered disappointments. Some of us would have had um, encountered problems we didn't, had no, no means of knowing were going to occur. And actually, kind of these have taken their toll. And Jesus says, I want you to walk freely into 2024. So what we need to do is symbolically kick the dust off our feet. So if you don't feel too self-conscious, could you do that with me for the next 20 seconds?
or 30 seconds. And just, it might be words that have been spoken, it might be disappointments, whatever it is. Kick those, kick the dust off your feet so that you're free to travel into 2024. Okay, great. Well, you might want to do more of that when you get home, I don't know. Do take a seat again. So, they journeyed in wonder, they journeyed with intent. Thirdly, wise travelers stop and they worship and they encounter God. That's what they did. They saw the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. And they bowed down and they worshipped him. And they gave him their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And as Fee said earlier, it seems to me that, you know, as Christ followers around Christmas, we can be extremely busy. We can be busy preparing our services. And thank you for everyone that poured everything into our service. They've been amazing. We can be busy preparing our homes for relatives, friends who are coming, drinks parties for neighbors and friends. And we can be so busy trying to get everything right that actually we don't stop and we don't pause and worship the Lord. Psalm 103 says this, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who rescues your life. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And Chris and the band have helped to lead us in worship. And I would want to encourage us, just for a few moments, just in the quietness, just to offer the Lord a few words of worship and praise and blessing. Just as we say, Lord, we bless you. We thank you. We're amazed at what you've done for us. We're amazed at your faithfulness in 2023. We're amazed, Lord, that you continue to look with such graciousness and love and kindness upon us. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And do you know, as we worship him, as we gaze upon him, we encounter more of his presence. It's not just our bodies, but our souls can get sluggish after Christmas, I think. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name. So wise travelers stop and worship and encounter. And if you're wired to be quite an activist, and I know that's part of my wiring, that the Lord continues to work on, then I want to encourage you, as you think about some of your goals for 2024, make one of your goals to stop, to deliberately find times to stop and to worship, to encounter. Not just to be doing for the Lord. There's always plenty of that but to stop and to worship, to behold him. 
And then fourth and final reflection. We see that the, these wise travelers, they journeyed on with enterprise. It's interesting. Having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back by another route. It meant they were listening to the Lord. They heard the whispers of the Spirit in the dream. They were attentive to him. And they took another route home. You can imagine the excitement with which they returned home and shared what they'd seen. But that phrase, by another route, is something I just want you to hold in your head. Because the living God is creative. The living God has other routes when we think there's only a dead end. The living God wants us to partner with him and live with enterprise. Live with enterprise. It's interesting. On this, on New Year's Eve last year, the head teacher at the school I used to go to in Bath tweeted and said one of his, one of his goals for, um, or one of his desires for his pupils for the year ahead is that they would take loads of risks and make many mistakes. And obviously, there are degrees of mistakes, aren't there? But I think the Lord would say, live creatively. Live with enterprise. Have a go. Have a go. Don't be fearful of getting it wrong. So we had in our lecture reading today, a lovely passage from Isaiah 43. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the, in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. So I wonder where you feel you're at as you prepare to journey into 2024. These wise travelers, they journeyed in wonder. They journeyed with intent. They stopped, worshipped, and encountered God. And then they journeyed forward with enterprise. Lord, would you grow us? Would you shape us as wise travelers for your glory? Amen.